Construct a truth table for P or Q and not R. Well, in order to do that, the first thing we need to recognize is that this compound statement consists of three simple statements, P, Q, and R. That means that this truth table will need to have 2 to the third, which is equal to 8 different rows. So let's begin by filling in columns P, Q, and R. For R, we'll alternate true, false, one at a time. For Q, we'll alternate true, false, two at a time. And for P, we'll alternate true, false, four at a time. Notice that each row of the table consists of a different case, ranging from all trues in the first row to all falses in the last row. Well, let's go ahead and write down our compound statement next. To complete our truth table, we'll take it one step at a time. We'll start inside of the parentheses and fill in column Q. Next, we'll fill in the negation of R. After we've filled in Q and the negation of R, we'll then form the conjunction for our third column. Once we've completed everything inside the parentheses, then we'll go ahead and fill in column P. And then finally, in our last step, we'll form the disjunction of columns 4 and 3. To fill in column Q, we just copy the truth values from column Q. We just write down trues and falses two at a time. In order to fill in the negation of our column, what we need to keep in mind is that if something is not true, then it is false. And if something's not false, then it is true. So for example, in our first row, we have R is true, therefore not R is false. In the second row, we have R is false, therefore not R is true. In the third row, we have R is true, therefore not R is false. We can start to see that we're just alternating false, true, false, true, all the way to the end of the table. Now that we've filled in the first two columns, we need to form the conjunction of those. If we look at the conjunction table, we recall that the only way that a conjunction can be true is if both parts are true. So what I'd like to do is to go through and find rows where both parts are true. We see that both parts are true in the second row, so that will result in a true. Both parts are true in the sixth row, that will result in a true. But those are the only two places where both columns are true. Everywhere else, there's at least one false, so all the rest of the entries will be false. Now that we've completed what's inside parentheses, we'll go to column four, which is just to copy down the truth values for P. Notice that in the P column, we have four trues followed by four falses. Finally, the last thing we need to do is to form the disjunction of columns 4 and 3. In order to do that, recall that the only way that a disjunction can be false is if both parts are false. So what I like to do is to go through and find the rows where both parts are false and fill that in first. So we see that in the fifth row, both parts are false. In the seventh row, both parts are false. And in the eighth row, both parts are false. In all the other rows, there's at least one true, and so the remaining truth values will be true. So our answer is here in column five. We see that our compound statement is true in five different cases and false in three different cases.